It's another week and that means we are headed into another weekly meal prep. I have some great meal ideas for you all this week and some easy stuff to whip up with some healthy options and delicious stuff that I'm excited to eat this week. As always, the first day that we're gonna focus on is Monday. We're gonna do burgers, which we will prep at meal time. We're going to do a vegetable pizza, which I'm about to mix up the crust for, and some Parmesan smashed mini potatoes. They are so good and we haven't made them for a while, so I'm excited to make them up. Before I mixed up my pizza crust, I wanted to get my little potatoes boiling because potatoes just take a while to cook through and get really soft to be able to smash them. So I went ahead and put them in one of my Dutch ovens and popped them on the stove. And then I put my dough hook onto my mixer. I get lots of questions about this mixer. It's a very inexpensive mixer when you're comparing it to say a KitchenAid that is on Amazon. So I will leave it linked below. I have had it for quite a while now. I wanna say the last at least two years. And it's held up pretty well and does a good job and has a great capacity especially for how inexpensive it is so this gluten-free pizza crust is really good but you could also use regular flour I always want to make that clear when it comes to making recipes with certain gluten-free flours that you can still make the same recipe and use regular flour so I just added the ingredients in and turned on the dough hook and it really just turned into a nice moldable dough. And then at this point, my potatoes were finished boiling. So I went ahead and cut some parchment paper for a nice size cookie sheet. This all depends on how big your potatoes are that you're going to be smashing. And I drained them and then dumped them on to the cookie sheet where I could kind of separate them and make them a bit more even across the tray because once you smash them out with a mug or a glass, they're going to take up a bit more space than whenever they're nice and round and whole. So I just went through and did that on the sheet. Now these are mixed potatoes. They're both a yellow potato and a red potato. I just think it looks so pretty, especially um, in a serving dish if you're serving this for company or for a party or something like that. These are really great as an appetizer, um, although we do enjoy them like this as a side for dinner. So I'm going through and just drizzling all of the potatoes with some olive oil. And then I take some salt, even a large flaked like sea salt is really great on something like this, but I just had my regular pink Himalayan salt. And then I got out a block of parm and shredded it up with the smaller, finer shred so that I was able to sprinkle it across the potatoes and it all got nice and melty in the oven. And to reheat these, I get so many questions on reheating stuff whenever you're prepping it for the week. I would actually reheat these in the air fryer. I think that that would make them nice and crunchy and would bring a better texture than say the microwave and whatnot. So at this point, I took my dough, I let it sit for 30 minutes because it does have some yeast in it. So I wanted to let it puff up just a little bit. So I let it sit and then I pressed it out into a nine by 13 before popping it in the oven to bake. While the crust was baking, I wanted to make the creamy, um, cream cheese type topping that goes underneath of all of the veggies. So some people will throw a packet of ranch seasoning in this. I don't use ranch seasoning very often. So I went ahead and just put some sour cream, some onion powder, some dill, and I also had some freeze dried chives from this past summer out of my garden. So I used up the last of those in this, which was totally worth it because this recipe turned out absolutely incredible. Hey friends, I wanna say a big thank you to Typher for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna be working with the Typher Dome air fryer today. I absolutely feel an air fryer is a complete staple in a kitchen. I know in my kitchen, I would definitely pick it over many other appliances <laughs> that I have. I just feel like there's so much you can do with it and it does an amazing job making the most amazing recipes. 
So today we are going to be making some Brussels sprouts in this. And Brussels sprouts have been a tricky thing for me to make in the air fryer in the past, but the Typher Dome air fryer has solved these problems for me. I'm gonna take you along with me and show you this delicious recipe. The biggest reasons I love this Typher air fryer is it has double the cooking space and it is 30% faster than others. And that's one reason that it's so easy to make Brussels sprouts in this. They came out crispy and perfect. I like mine a little on the crunchy side as you're gonna see here. But it is a whisper quiet operation whenever it's running and it has a dehydrate mode, which I think is so cool because I do enjoy trying out dehydrating recipes. And it also has a unique self-cleaning mode. So it helps you out just like your oven would. And it also includes a three-year warranty. In the past, I've also had issues with air fryers not heating evenly and that of course causes a lot of problems when making something like brussels sprouts where you want everything to be very even and this air fryer is incredible for that to make these brussels sprouts i just cut them into bite-sized pieces i put a little bit of avocado oil into the bag i love to use a storage bag because i can get everything coated super evenly and then i just grab my favorite spice or seasoning and dump a little bit of that in there and mix it all up and I'm ready to put it in to the air fryer. Now this air fryer, you can adjust your temperature. It does have some presettings that are super handy as well. And you can adjust your timing, but look at the size of the inside of this. And you can see it in comparison to my hand. Plus it has a nice rack that makes cleaning very simple and super convenient. So I just slid it all in there. I turned on the air fryer and I set it to to 375 degrees for 15 minutes and you wouldn't even have to do them this long I just love mine really really crunchy and you can see how beautiful they turned out by using my code Adeline Zook you can get 10% off your Typher Dome air fryer and check out the information in the description box below once I had the creamy topping all mixed up, I went ahead and chopped up some veggies. You wanna chop everything pretty small because you want to have all of those veggie toppings mixed together. And every time you take a bite, you get different um, pieces of the veggies. So this day I used some broccoli, some purple onion, some cucumber. You can really get creative and do whatever veggies you or your family really love. This is something that is often used for picnics and parties, but I think it's a great dinner side because it's an unusual way to get veggies in. And for myself, for my family, I think that vegetable pizza always has to have red bell pepper on it. It's just part of the flavor that I'm expecting when I bite into a vegetable pizza. So I went ahead and diced some of that up as well. Sometimes I put bacon on my vegetable pizza, but this day I had a lot to prep and I was just trying to get everything accomplished. So I did shred up some cheddar cheese, but I didn't get any bacon made for on top of this. And once the crust was out of the oven, I actually put it in my refrigerator so that it would cool quickly. And then I spread out the cream cheese mixture onto the crust and then I layered my veggies on top in the order that I thought looked the nicest just because this is such a colorful thing to create and eat and this recipe was so bomb I didn't know how it was going to turn out it was just so good especially with that gluten-free crust I just didn't wasn't quite sure if we'd like it but everyone loved it Next, we are gonna work on Tuesday. So Tuesday, we're gonna do a taco salad bar. And I'm just starting some brown rice on the stove top. Nothing too crazy, just with some water and mixed in a little bit of butter and just a little bit of my homemade taco seasoning. Let me know how you like to make Mexican inspired rice, what you like to put in yours. I would love a little bit of inspiration. I just did this because it's what came to mind this day. And I think it would be really good to even make like a cilantro lime rice, something like that. So let me know in the comments what you like to add to your rice. 
just to flavor it up a bit. Then I fried up two pounds of ground beef just to be able to add that protein into our taco salads. And I also added my homemade taco seasoning to this as well. I usually do two to three tablespoons of seasoning per pound. It took a little while to get that figured out, but we have that pretty well nailed down and it makes such a great flavorful taco meat. Now I'm just putting together a few containers. These are freezer containers I usually use to freeze things, especially in bulk but I decided to go ahead and use these that way. The night that we eat this, I can pull everything out and we've got our taco bar all set up and ready to go. And it just kind of cut down on one more step to take everything and put it in one kind of container or baggies and then dumping it into serving dishes. This will just be ready for me when we're ready to eat. So I also chopped up some purple onion for on our taco salads and I shredded up some cheddar cheese. Honestly, till I got through this entire prep, I should have just used my food processor to shred all the cheddar cheese that I used this day, <laughs> but that's okay. I like my little box shredder and I think it just goes to show you don't need a fancy food processor to be able to prep. You can use the most simple things and inexpensive things in your kitchen and still make incredible meals that your family will love. Whenever the taco meat was finished, I went ahead and just put it into a storage container. And in case you all missed it, in my last video, I actually chatted a little bit about switching to cast iron. So if that is something that you're interested in, go back and watch my last video. And there's a lot of info in the comments too. Everybody was kind of chatting about their tips and tricks on switching to cast iron as well. So Wednesday, we are going to make a chicken cordon bleu cast roll and then I will make baked potatoes on the night that I am ready to make this meal. So I am preparing this casserole and then I'm going to refrigerate it and bake it on the night we eat it. I'm starting out by shredding up two eight ounce blocks of Swiss cheese and this recipe was so so good. Honestly, one of the best in my personal opinion that I have made in a while. And it's really easy to prepare ahead of time. I also shredded up some Parmesan as well um, because both of those cheeses are used in this recipe. Now you're going to start out making the sauce by putting some butter in a pan. And I also have my pre-made garlic cubes that I made in my last video. They're so handy, especially on busy meal prep days like this when I'm tackling a weekly meal prep. It's just nice to have some of those things ready for, to go for me. And then I added in some chicken broth and some Dijon mustard. So this is actually a Dijon sauce and that is one of the flavors that goes into chicken cordon bleu. And so I'm just using a little whisk and I'm whisking this all together and then I'm adding in some flour. Now I am using gluten-free flour but you can use regular flour um, instead of the gluten-free flour and we're just kind of making a creamy sauce out of this. So you want to make sure that you whisk it and whisk it and whisk it. You don't want to walk away from this. It can burn really easily and if you don't continue to whisk it, it will stay clumpy. So I added the parm into that and then also some milk and some cream. Just whisked it all together and then the other thing that goes into this casserole is some steamed broccoli. Now you're going to want to cut this broccoli into smaller bite-sized pieces or even smaller than bite-sized really because it just combines better with the meat and other things that will be in this. So the broccoli is one of the layers as you'll see here in a moment. Now, the other two layers that go into this is ham and chicken. You can do a rotisserie chicken, super simple. I have my home canned shredded chicken, so I grabbed a quart jar of that. And then I also used just some deli ham. You could use ham steaks and dice it up. You could use diced ham as well, but I just thought it would be easier to eat probably in this casserole if it was sliced ham like that. Now for the top, you can use pre-bought breadcrumbs. You could make sourdough breadcrumbs. You could make homemade breadcrumbs, however you wanna do it. But because we do eat mostly gluten-free in our house, 
I'm using another method and that is taking pork rinds and you can season them however you'd like. I'm just throwing about a tablespoon of butter into my food processor with them on high and blending it all down and these are so yummy done like this. They give the exact crunch and feel of real breadcrumbs. So if you've never tried that as a good breadcrumb alternative, I highly recommend it. You can even coat chicken in it and make crispy chicken in the air fryer. So good. So now we're gonna layer up our casserole. So I put some olive oil in the bottom. I put some of the chicken that I actually drained and rinsed. And then I also put the broccoli pieces in, topped it off with the ham pieces. And then I'm going to pour that cream sauce that we made in the pan over top of all of this so that it just kind of combines all the flavors as it drizzles down through the different layers of everything. And like I said, this is so good. This would be an amazing freezer meal as well. Um, it would be a great postpartum meal. It would be a great meal for a family member if you're taking it somewhere. Um, it's just one of those crowd pleasers I think everybody really loves. So here I'm adding in the shredded Swiss cheese first and then I'm gonna top it with the shredded Parmesan cheese and then I'm going to finish it off with my pork rind breadcrumbs so it's got a nice crunch on top. I did actually take a clip of what it looked like when we baked this just so you could see what the top looked like. It was so melty and bubbly and yummy. This is such a great comfort meal for sure. So for Thursday, we're going to make meatloaf, cheesy potatoes, and garlic green beans. Now the green beans I will be making on the night we eat these, um, but the rest of it I'm prepping. So I have about two pounds of ground beef. I will leave this recipe in the description box below. This is out of an old Mennonite cookbook and I love it. It's like a tried and true and it's really simple. It only has, I wanna say like six ingredients, something like that. It does call for milk, but I didn't have whole milk. So I combined some almond milk with some heavy cream and just called it good. And I also used gluten-free breadcrumbs in this recipe, but the recipe itself calls for regular breadcrumbs. You can do whatever works best for you. You add an egg, you add some onion. And since I prepped this diced onion in my last video, um, I actually pulled some out of the freezer went ahead and microwaved it just for like 30 seconds or so. And so I could break it all up and then added it in to my meatloaf recipe here. And it's just a nice little time saver not to not have to get out a cutting board and everything with my onions. Meatloaf is another very freezer meal friendly recipe. Something that you can make ahead of time. Like for example, with doing this in a weekly meal prep, I will just be saran wrapping the top of this when I'm done and putting it into the refrigerator raw. And then I will be able to bake it on the night that we eat it so that it's hot and ready to go. And I did take some clips at the end for you all to see that and how it looks whenever I have it completed. And I like to kind of shape the top of it so that the middle is a little bit higher. So as it bakes, um, any of the liquids will go around the edges and kind of just gives it a nice shape. So now we're gonna make some cheesy potatoes with my home canned potatoes. I put them into a colander and just rinsed them down. A lot of my canned goods, whenever I'm gonna use it like this, I do like to rinse the items. I just think that it gives it a more fresh taste and it doesn't taste canned when you do that. So I'm just taking a knife and I'm dicing up these potatoes. This is so fast and easy. It cuts out that time of having to boil up or bake the potatoes for a recipe like this. So I'm just dicing them really small so that they're easy to eat. And I'm shredding up again some more cheddar cheese. Like I said earlier, if I would have really thought through how much cheddar cheese, how much cheddar cheese <laughs> I was gonna be using this day, I definitely think I would have just thrown it all in my food processor. So I'm gonna shred that up and this is an eight ounce block and I'm actually just shredding the entire block and I'm gonna put about 
three fourths of it into the bowl with the potatoes and then I left a little pile of it out so that I can top it all off whenever I'm finished. You could put diced onions in this. I just shook a liberal amount of onion powder and then I put a couple tablespoons of butter in it. And you can use store-bought cream of chicken soup, a can of that in this recipe. But personally, I just like to whip up my own homemade from my chicken broth. So that's what I did, but you don't have to get that complicated with it if it's not for you to do. I will, however, leave my cream of chicken or you can actually make cream of mushroom with the same recipe in the description box below because it is really easy to whip up if you don't wanna have all of the preservatives that are in the cream of chicken and mushroom soup from the store. But if you're in a busy stage of life and that's what you need to do, go ahead and do it. So I added a little splash of heavy cream and also some Parmesan to this as well. You could use any type of cheese you want to, um, but that's just what I had left over from my other recipe. And then I'm putting this into an oiled baking pan. And I admit, I did something. I completely forgot to put my sour cream into this recipe. I like to put a couple tablespoons of it in this. Totally forgot. So I went ahead and just stuck it on top, smeared it around. I like to show you guys my mistakes and the fact that I don't always remember everything either. And so if you are forgetful in the kitchen at times, just remember, it's normal. We're all human. <laughs> So I just topped it off with that and then I put my shredded cheddar on top. The next thing we're going to do is create the topping for the meatloaf. So I actually like to bake it as you're going to see here in a little bit. I have a few clips of whenever I'm baking it. So I actually like to bake it and then at the end I take this topping. It's basically a homemade barbecue sauce. I mix ketchup and mustard and some brown sugar and I just taste it until I like the taste. I like to make extra too because my family likes to actually put some on each slice of meatloaf that they get. So I stir it up and taste it until it's to the flavor combo that we like. And then right whenever the meatloaf is done, I pull the meatloaf out I top it with this and I put it back in the oven with the broil setting on until it just looks nice and kind of, I don't know, it just gets a little bit darker. That's always what I look for is the color and just kind of bakes in just a bit to the meatloaf. That way it's not burning on top and I still get that really nice saucy top on top of my meatloaf. So on Friday, we were actually going out of town and so I didn't need to prep for that day. So this is everything I prepped for this week. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out the information about the Typher air fryer in the description box below. And I'll see you all in my next video.